Now, instead of tearing down statues, how about we fight our cultural rot and start putting up more to honour our heroes? In fact, a new book has uncovered one hero that we and our army have shamefully overlooked. This is the book, Secret Agent, Unsung Hero, about Bruce Downing, guillotined by the Nazis after working with the French resistance in World War II to help Allied soldiers and airmen escape to Britain through Spain from France. One of that book's co-authors is Dowding's nephew, Peter Dowding, the former Labor Premier of Western Australia. Peter Dowding, thank you so much for your time. Why was your uncle in France during the Nazi occupation? Well, he went over to study a bit of French at the Sorbonne University and got uh, caught up with the Café Society and the uh, Gay Paris and remained there until the war broke out. When the war broke out, he, he and his family were basically pacifists, but he felt he had to help the French. Uh, couldn't join the French army, but he joined the British army as an interpreter. And that's why he was in France at that time. They got run over by the Germans and he was in a POW camp and he escaped down to Marseille and then didn't leave, which uh, was why he ended up where he was. Well, down in Marseille, and I noted he escaped down a sewer from the, uh, from the uh, prisoner of war camp. Uh, when he got to Marseille, yeah. he joined a network to help Allied servicemen escape. Uh, how, how did that happen? How did he get involved in that and what did he do? Well, he, he really, he and, and uh, a guy called uh, uh, Kasky, who was a, a Presbyterian minister, and a few other French-speaking uh, servicemen, they really formed the, the organisation in the chaos that was Marseille at that time, the six million people ran down the French uh, highways to Marseille. And uh, in Marseille, MI9 had been established before the, at the very beginning of the war, but it hadn't got much traction at that stage. So it was individuals getting together to form this network to help people out over the Pyrenees. That's really what he was doing. And uh, he and uh, Ka Reverend Kasky and a few others got together and eventually it built up into a much more formalised organisation. And uh, they helped many, many people get over the Pyrenees into Spain and from there to, uh, uh, to Britain. He was captured then by the Nazis at the end of 1941 after he was betrayed by an Englishman, a, a petty crook you write, you write in your, the, your book, uh, a man who'd worked for this same network but was thrown out for stealing money uh, from it. What happened to Bruce Dowding then? Well, he went north to take over the organisation and uh, <clears throat> at the end of 1941, the Gestapo picked up Cole, the man whose picture you put up, and he just uh, t t told everybody's uh, name to the Gestapo uh, without any compulsion. No one beat him up or anything. He just uh, coughed the lot up and the, helped the Gestapo identify them and they went round in December picking the organisation up and they picked up a number of people at least uh, 20 or 30 of them and uh, ultimately about 100 and nine of them were uh, executed, decapitated in June 1943. So your uncle was one of them and he was a long time in that prison before they finally killed him. People remember uh, him in that uh, prison, in that Nazi prison. Yes, they do. And, and uh, interestingly, some of the people that he was working with, uh, one of them in particular was sent to a prisoner of war camp. Bruce never claimed to the Germans that he was a soldier and he stayed with his French companions rather than be possibly shipped out. Uh, but a number of people were in prison, mention him. Um, it's a bit... It, it's been a very interesting exercise putting the story together because... He's mentioned in a whole range of places uh, uh, and we wanted to tell a coherent story of what had happened to him and that's been a job of gathering this information over many years. Now, Peter Downing, what 
struck me really about this story, apart from his courage, giving his life um, to helping others in, you know, such terrible danger, is that your uncle, Bruce Dowding, never got the recognition he deserved. France actually wanted to give him its highest honour for bravery, but it was never awarded. Tell us why. Well, the, the French government wrote to the Australian government and the Australian government uh, discovered that he was not an Australian member of the Australian services, uh, although someone in the Prime Minister's department identified who he was and where his family was, but they never communicated to the family the French offer and they simply wrote back to the French uh, government saying, well, he wasn't an Australian, so uh, don't worry, don't bother us about it. That's just so sad. We, we, we have a habit at the moment of when we're looking at, to, at people who have been honoured, you know, to tear down statues, to this, that, to, you know, uh, pour rubbish over our past. Why do you think it's important to honour people like uh, your uncle? Well, look, the purpose of the book's not really about getting an honour for him, but there were a lot of very brave people uh, who haven't been honoured in wars. And we would like to make the point that these people need to be recognised and they do need to be accepted as part of the heroes of our community. We, we, in that context, we'd very much like Bruce to be recognised. In fact, we, we put in an application into the Australian Honours and award secretariat saying, well, if you can't give, if he can't get his quite a year, maybe you could give him an Australian Hero Award. But, but we haven't ever had a positive response about it. I just think we need to recognise um, it's not always the super heroes who are the important ones, but, but it's the ordinary men and women who do fantastically brave things we should recognise. Absolutely. Peter Dowding, the book is terrific. Great story. One of those inspirational ones about Australia, the kind of people that uh, do us proud. Thank you so much for writing the book. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you. And I've, I've left one here for you, Andrew, with an endorsement. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> uh, former Labor Premier, I don't know that you should be doing that, but thank you so much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.